Hi, everybody. This is Virginia Milner coming to you for the DeKalb County Library System. And I'm just noticing that my camera matches my shirt. <laughs> anyway, we're going to do something a, a little bit different today. We're going to make a pendant, uh, a wire framed pendant, and we're going to make our own frame. I think this is going to be a project that's suitable for the whole family from kids on up. It's um, not going to be hard. You're going to have to pay attention to measurements, um, but other than that, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm calling it an, kind of an abstract 3D type of thing that's going to be popping out of a frame. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and you really only need your usual tools and supplies except for one thing. I'm using 18 gauge wire because like I said, we're making a, a, our own frame and 20 gauge wire will be just fine because we're going to be wire wrapping things to the frame. So it should hold its form, but I thought it might be a good idea to use a stronger wire just to make it, well, a little bit uh, more stable. So I'm going to be using 18 gauge wire. It's still gonna be um, soft, um, a soft wire um, and a selection of beads and jump rings, uh, lobster clasp and a chain. Um, this is, I'm going super simple with how we do it because it, uh, since we're going to be constructing a frame, I didn't want to throw too many things at you. You know how I usually like to make my own clasps, but I thought I would uh, go ahead and use a pre-formed one instead. Now, for tools, you need the usual. You need your round nose pliers. They're round all the way around the barrel and they taper uh, smaller towards the tip and they're larger at the hilt here at the bottom. Uh, our square pliers that are slightly rounded on the outside and completely flat on the inside. If you buy these pliers, you wanna make sure that the inside doesn't have any of those um, grips or um, I don't know what you call them. They, they something that you can use to grip things better. You want it to be completely flat because otherwise it can chew up your wire. The third thing that you want, I'm looking for the fourth, there it is. The third thing that you want is a pair of cutters that will use their wire cutters that will use to cut the wire and chain. And Lastly, you need a ruler to measure everything out. That's it. Usual, the usual suspects and um, just with the one little uh, change of 18 gauge wire. Oh, and I sometimes, where did I put them? Like to use these really flat pliers to hold things because I, I get a better grip. So you don't have to. These work just fine. But for me, I just sometimes like to use these because I get a little bit more um, uh, uh, grip on these than I do on these. That's just personal preference. You can't use these for everything. These you can use for a lot more than you can use these. So um, that's a specialty item that I don't like to say, you need to go out and buy that unless you want to. Okay, so I'm gonna put those over there because I might use them but I didn't want to pick them up and you go, wait a minute, that doesn't look like what she showed us. Anyway, let's get down here and get to work. Okay, so I need eight, uh, six inches of 18 gauge wire. This piece that I have here is about an inch and a half longer because it came off, it, it came off the end of a spool. So I'm just going to use it up and cut off what I don't need. But you need about six inches of 18 gauge wire. And the frame that I'm going to make, if you can make it the size that you want, but you have to make sure that the beads you put in there are going to fit. So you can either decide what beads you wanna put in the frame and then make the frame to fit the, the size of the beads, or you can make the um, frame and then put the beads in that fit, that fit the frame. It just depends on how you want to do it. I know how much I need to fit in my frame because I've already kind of constructed, uh, laid out what I want to put inside of it. So my um, total amount of wire is six inches. It's going to be one and an eighth on two sides. It's going to be a square frame. 
that I'm going to kind of skew a little bit to the uh, left so that it hangs where, here, here's an example. So it's going to be a square frame, but I'm putting my um, little loop on top so that it's going to hang like this instead of like this. I started to do it like this. This was exactly, like, this was my picture <laughs> that I drew. This was what I was going to do. But then I kind of turned it to the side and I said, oh, that would be kind of neat. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a square frame and then turn it to the side and it's going to be a triangle. You, on the other hand, can make this square if you would prefer and put this same little loop in the center here and entirely up to you. It'll be, you'll do it the same way I'm going to do it, except that I'm just putting my loop in a different spot. So what I need is one and an eighth inches of wire on two corners, one and a half on the other that I can use to wrap around my loop. And then I'm giving myself two inches uh, to make my loop. There will be some left, but that's okay. All right, so I'm going to start with my two inches. So I'm going to measure that out on my ruler here. Then I'm going to grab my square pliers, and I'm going to put a little bend in my wire, just a little bend. Now, if you're using these pliers, you can go all the way down with your bend. Just push it down until the wire is flat across your pliers. You don't want to bend it under or anything like that. You want it to be straight out to the side and flat, nice and tight against your pliers, like so. So there's my first bend. And then I'm going to, the next two are going to be my one and an eighth inch, inches. Okay, so I'm going to measure one and an eighth inches. Okay, we have my pliers again. Now, I've shown you this trick before. If I want a nice, um, really sharp bend, there is a way to do it instead of just bending it straight across. I'm going to bend it down. I don't think my hand moved, but let me double check my measurement. I'm going to bend it straight down, like so, until the wire again is right there across my pliers. Then I'm going to grab these because, again, I get a better grip with these. So my wire is straight across the pliers, and then I'm going to swing it up in the same direction as this one. Just turn that up like so. And then I get a much sharper bend if I do it that way. Let me remeasure. Yes, one and an eighth on the inside here. Then I'm going to measure another one and an eighth. Put my bend in, I could use these, but I may as well just stick with these since I'm going to end up with these anyway. Bend straight down and then swing it up. And there's my little flame. Ta da! What could be simpler than that? Now, let's measure everything out to make sure. It's the way I want it. So this is leaning a little bit past my one eighth mark. So let's straighten it out to where I want it. There we go. There we go. Now, these are extending beyond your one and an eighth. The actual sides of your square, you want them to all be one and, one and an eighth till you get to this crossover point. So let's measure. Very good, it's slightly more than one and an eighth, but that's okay. 
This one is also slightly more than a one and an eighth. My thing is it's one and an eighth on the inside. If, you, if you're looking at the outside of it, it's going to extend a little beyond that, but that's okay. And then my crossover point. What have I got? Good. One and an eighth. Let me open that up just a little bit more. Good. And then my last side is one and an eighth. There's my little eighth mark right there where that's running up the side. Perfect. Very nice. So now I'm going to wrap this little wire. See, I have more than I need because I had extra on that little piece. So I just need to wrap this around this long wire. And I only need to wrap it around one time uh, towards the back because I, I don't really need to, I'm not wrapping it several times. I'm just securing my wire like that. Ooh, that is blurry. Yeah, I'm just securing my wire, that's it. I think if I bring this camera down, it doesn't have as far to focus. It likes that better. All right, then I have to remember that it's that low. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is take my pliers and hold on right there where it's crossing over. I don't want this to shift, otherwise I'm gonna lose space on, on this side. So I'm gonna make sure I'm holding it nice and firm so that nothing, nothing moves. So now I'm gonna wrap this short tail around the long tail, okay? Spin that around as close to the pliers as I can get. And it's a little bit away from the pliers, so I'm gonna push it down until it's right there against my pliers, the where I want them so that I don't have extra space. And I'm gonna measure just to make sure. Good, 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 good. Good. I'm going to grasp that again and wrap it around the rest of the way. There we go. I'm going to squeeze that, just close up that little loop as much as I can. Good. Nice. And this is my front. So I'm going to wrap that around one more half time. Oops, don't shift. Don't, see how it's trying to move? Don't do that. Stop it. Remeasure. Yes. Squeeze that nice and snug so it won't shift. And I'm going to cut this off, cut this little tail off, and then push this down against the other wrap. There we go. And push that tail down nice and tight. Good. I will, I will measure 15 billion times. Good, there we go, nice. Nice, and again, you can make your frame and then fit your beads in it. You don't have to do this, but I, I know what I need for my beads to fit in. So I have to be a little more, a little more careful. Okay, so then the next thing I'm going to do is make a loop here on top. See, I had a good inch and a half too much. I just need to make a loop here on top that will be for my cord or my chain or whatever you want to use to hang this. So I'm going to grab my round nose pliers um, and I'm going to put a jump ring on there. So it doesn't have to be a huge loop. So I'm just going to go down here to 
almost in the middle of my flyers. And I always say all flyers aren't created equal. Mine might make a smaller or a larger loop at this point on my flyers than yours does um, because you might have a different brand of flyers, but you want to make the determination of how big you want your loop to be. And I'm just folding my wire over my pliers and I just roll that around until I get it where I want. So there's my loop. I'll bring that even closer. There's my little loop. Now I'm going to cut it off right on the inside here. and push those ends together. I'm gonna move that away from this part so that I don't accidentally clip something I don't wanna clip. Now I'm gonna take my pliers, go to the inside of my wire because I want it to end right there. I'm gonna go right here to the inside of my wire and clip that off. Well, at least I have enough that I can do something with this. That's always a plus. Then I'm going to push down my end until it's flush against my wrap. And there is my frame. Easy peasy. <laughs> and now comes more of the fun part. I'm going to put some beads in there. I love that part. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna grab some beads and what I have, I already have it all kind of designed out. Let's bring them up. Let's bring them up here. Okay, so let's bring those up here. I have these little stone, rectangle stone beads. And this is what I'm going to do. Let's put this blue one here. As I was working, they started rolling around on the mat. So I have to re fix my little design. Blue, put this white one on here. Let's move this over where you can see what the heck I'm doing. Oh, I may as well just put it in here. So this is what I'm gonna have. I'm gonna put this purple in this color. And we've got this beautiful bright blue. I really should have the names of these stones. And I should have written them down so I could tell you what I have. Those of you who get kits, you will get some of these same beads, different colors, but same beads that you can use for your little abstract framed pendant. And last but not least, this pretty adventuring. Put that in there. There we go. And so this is what I'm doing. I'm gonna wrap these on the inside. Awesome. Okay, so let's move that out of the way. It's like, it's like I'm rounding up um, the balls for a pool table. Okay, so let's see if they'll stay in place. Oh, but you know what? I could put this other one on there and then they won't move. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so now I'm going to wrap them in place. For that, I need 24 gauge wire. And I have already measured this out. It takes me about 12 inches of, of wire. So I'm going to give myself 15 inches of wire. And then if I have some left, I have some left. But you're better off not not uh, scrimping. You want to have enough. The good thing about it is if you do run out, you can just cut another piece and keep going. This type of design, um, that's not a problem. 
So got my little 15 inches of white. And it depends on how many times you want to wrap this. If you want to wrap a bunch of times around the frame, you're going to need more white. But for what I'm proposing here, it's only going to take about a foot. OK. So the first thing I'm going to do is wrap around one side leading up to where my other beads are going to go. So I'm going to give myself about half an inch of wire to hold on to um, just so I have something uh, secure and decide where I want my first beads to start. I'm giving myself a little bit of space away from the side of the frame uh, because I know that the beads aren't going to fill up the entire frame. And also, you'll be able to shift these around a little bit so you don't have to worry about it being too, too exact. Make sure that when you're planning out the beads that go inside your frame, that you don't make it so tight that you run out of space. Okay, so I've got my little beads and I'm just gonna thread, weave it through the center of my frame and wrap it around. The trickiest part is the first couple of wraps. That's why you really do need enough of a tail to hold on to. Okay, so I'm just gonna weave that through a couple of times and I wanna get it as close as I can. Those first couple are gonna be a little questionable. So I'm going to, I have a lot of space in between. All I'm gonna do is push it together or you can use, if you don't wanna wreck your nails, mine are always a mess. You can just use your pliers to squeeze the ends, uh, the loops together. So that's two wraps I've got there. I'm gonna give it a third wrap. And you want it nice and tight because it's still gonna roll. It's round wire on round wire. So unless if you were using square wire, the um, edges would keep it from rolling around. This is round wire. So it is going to move until you anchor it with some beads. Okay, so I've got just three wraps here. And uh, what I wanna make sure of is that I have enough wraps, start with this guy right here, to go to the center of my bead where the drill is. So put that on and check it out. Make sure I have enough wraps. I'm pretty sure that's going to do it. So I'm going to put this on and yes, very nice. Enough wraps to get me to the center of my V, which is exactly what I wanted. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut this tail off. Here is your, squeeze these together, nice and neat. Here's the thing. Do you want more wraps going over here? You can. Um, it's up to you. It's it's a, a artistic preference. But I'm going to go ahead and stop here. I've got three wraps. That looks good. Move my little bead out of the way because I want to cut this little tail off. I'm going to cut that off. And that's really short. And if I cut it like this with no support, that would go flying across the room and probably land on my floor where I'd have to find it or not be able to walk around barefoot forever until I did. So I'm gonna just turn this down into my little spool here, flip that off and let it drop down inside a little shorter. Boom. And let that drop down inside. <laughs> There's a hole in the bottom. That's okay. I still captured it. If I capture it on here, I can scoot it out of the way. If I let it shoot across the room, then I have a problem. All right, so now I have this little tip on here that I have sticking up that's, ooh, ow, ooh, ow, pointy, pointy, pointy. I don't want that. So I'm gonna take my square pliers and here, this is the direction that I was going. I like to come at it from behind and just squeeze it down I always tell people I, I do it from, from the back because it can't see me coming and run away from me. Yes, I am crazy. So there we go. So now I push that down nice and snug. It won't catch on anything. 
I'm going to slide my bead back up there. And remember I said, you'll still be able to maneuver these until they're anchored. So I'm just going to scoot that over. There's my first wrap. I'm going to grab my other beads that are going to go on there. It's a pretty turquoise one. And this brilliant orange one. I'm going to slide those on. And there's my little first row. So now I just need to wrap around the other side. Let's see which way am I going here? You need to go under here and get this back through here because I'm wrapping this way on the top. You can you can weave it. You can wrap around this way and then come back the other way. It's up to you. I'm gonna try to keep it all the same. So I'm gonna bring that back through. Try not to put any sharp bends in your wire if you have to do this. Let's weave that back through. There we go. Straighten that out. Put that bead back on. Hey, there we go. And let's wrap it around the other side. Let's anchor this rib. Okay, I'm just going to weave that through. That first wrap on there, make sure they're nice and close together. Okay, I don't want too much wiggle room in space. Somebody's texting me, they need to leave me alone. I'm going to turn off the sound. Okay, now I want to wrap until I get far enough over there over that I can put the next row of beads on. So I'm going to just keep on weaving through here. There we go. And people always ask, how many wraps? How many wraps should I? I don't know. It depends on where you're placing your beads and where the next drill point is on the next bead. So just wrap until you get to that point. And what you can do is put your bead on. Where's my next bead here? Let me go blue and check. Yes, that's far enough over so that I can get that on there without having too much space in between my beads. Or if you want more space in your beads, keep wrapping. Squeeze that together so that those are nice and neat. Oh, I'm getting a lot of glare. There we go. Until those are nice and neat. Try to that one. Glare, glare, glare. There we go. Why am I getting so much glare? I used less light today and I've got the sun shining into my window, which might be part of the culprit. Now I can't see. Good grief. All right. Okay, so my little wraps are nice and close together. I can tell that my bead will fit on there. I might need one more time around. Let's go around one more time. And now let's check. Let's put my bead on and just check my placement. Slide that on. That's a little close and give it another wrap or two. Okay, slide that through. Oh, I know why, because I pushed them nice and tight together and, and lessened the space. So I'm gonna give it one more wrap. See how that does. Okay, let's pop that bead on there.
Go down, go down, go down. And yes, very nice, very, very nice. Okay, let's pop the other two beads on. Okay, really brilliant. Green one. Oh, and I'm using polymer clay. These are polymer clay and the rectangles are stone. So um, different kinds of stone. So I thought this would be nice and colorful and I never play with my polymer clay. That rhymes. So I thought I would bring it out. There we go, nice. I'm gonna give it one wrap and then taste, test, check my placement. Make sure everything's sitting the way I want it. Yes, that's good. Reach those over nice and tight. Around the frame. Good. Get back on there. Okay, wrap that around. And keep wrapping until I get to the point where I know I can put another bead on beside this one. Okay. And every once in a while, I just push these together. I just, I just push these together nice and close. And again, if you don't want to use your nails to do it, there we go. Okay, I think I need another wrap or two. You can see how much wrapping I down, did down here will give me an idea of how much I need for this side. Sorry, something. There we go. All right. I think I'm going to do one more and then check. Push those together. Oh my gosh, I have to turn off the sound. Squeeze, there we go. Does that look like enough compared to over here? Let's give it one more wrap. And if you want to, you can always count. You can count the number of wraps you have over here and just repeat it on the other side. But be aware that these polymer clay beads are made by hand. So they may not be exactly six millimeter, what, which is what I have, um, which is what I'm using. So. Okay, so slide that bead on and check to see if I have enough wraps for it to fit beside the other row. Oh, look at that. Absolute perfection. I shouldn't have said that. There's no such thing. I, people will go, oh, mine's not perfect. It's really not supposed to be. This is supposed to be art. And I am thinking this is very abstract. So very abstract. Um, yeah, I think I'll use this white one. Uh, not uh, very abstract and very um, organic. I just I just want something fun. There we go. I'm gonna scoot these over just a little bit like that. Nice. Yes. Okay. And wrap that around. Just gonna weave that around my little frame. Squeeze them together nice and snug. Okay. And then keep on wrapping until I can get my next row on. Okay, get through there. Oh, by the way, if you would like, you can use 26 gauge for this too. But I, I like 24 gauge, I just like the strength of it. 
I just feel a little bit more secure about that because when you have something like that and, you know, little kids like things like this, especially like really little kids, toddlers and things like that, see something that this, that's this colorful and they start pulling on it and it's going to come apart. So do yourself a favor and just use a slightly stronger wire. It still weaves very nicely, um, but you don't have to worry about it being too fragile to stand up against um, little curious people. I have a little guy living next door to me that probably isn't all that interested in my jewelry, but you never know. I just like to take precautions. It's brilliant too. He's like one and he knows how to spell. What? Okay, anyway, there we go. And I think I'm, I'm just adding a lot of chatter because I know this has got to be boring at this point. You watched me do three whole rows and it's just very repetitive. Oh, look at that. And then see how this scooted over? When I get finished, I can move it to the placement that I want. Okay, let's put my last two beads on here. This pretty fuchsia bead. Well, I think it's more pink. That is a very bright Barbie pink. <laughs> okay, and purple bead. I'll round it off. Ooh, that is just fitting inside my frame. Just fitting. Really just fitting. So this wrapping is going to be fun. Okay, so now I need to we what I can do is pull this just a little bit out. There we go. Still very, very snug, but it will work. Wrap my wire around my frame. And again, this we're weaving, so it doesn't, it's not supposed to have a bunch of space. You wrap it around and then scoot it under right in between the bead and the frame to get it nice and pretty. Okay, and wrap it around my frame again. And the biggest thing you want to, one of the biggest things that you want to be aware of is not getting a lot of kinks in your wire. If you see some starting to form, just run your fingers down there to straighten them out. Okay, wrap and wrap that around. And I'm gonna make it comparable to this side. That's all I need, I'm coming. My alarm sings, cut with the chatter. Okay, so I'm gonna scoot this over to where I want it. Before I cut this off, I'm gonna see if I want any more wrapping. Scooch this over a little bit to where I want it to land. Yes, nice. There we go. And you can use your pliers for this. Again, if you don't want to compromise your manicure, just use your pliers and scoot it over where you want. But that looks very, very nice. Okay. Squeeze these little rings together. and flip off that end. Look how much I had left. And 15 inches. And I'm gonna wrap this around. I want it to stop underneath my wire. So I'm gonna cut that a little bit closer because I'm afraid that if I wrap it around, that end will end up on the other side and I'll still be able to feel it. And I don't wanna feel it. So I'm going to cut it a little bit closer into my, my little spool with the hole in it. Yeah, get a little piece off of there, good. And let's push that. Oh, where's my camera? 
And let's push that down. Good. Just roll that under there. Nothing sticking out the back, nothing sticking out the front. There's my frame 3D abstract pendant. Yay! <laughs> nice. There it is. Did it do? Did it do? That's the back. This is the one. Did it do? <gasps> Yay! And like I said, I think this is good for many ages. You saw how repetitive it is. You design, the biggest thing that you're going to have to do is make the frame. Then you're going to have to decide the design that's going inside of the frame. Those are probably the biggest things. After that, it's just a matter of weaving the beads in place and you have a pendant. Next, let's put it on a chain. I found this chain, this piece of chain that I'm going to use. I'm giving those of you that get um, that get chain, I'm giving you a, kind of a prettier chain. Yeah, I'm giving you that very filigree and all of that, but I'm gonna use this one. All I need to do is put a jump ring on one side, a jump ring on here because the way this is wrapped. Now, if you wanted to wrap your loop from front, this is the front, to back like that, you wouldn't have to have a jump ring. But because I wrapped my side, mine side to side, I need a jump ring or not because you can just thread this inside. Oh, my loop's too small for this, this chain. I could have threaded it into the other one that I showed you and um, not had a jump ring, but I'm using a jump ring to, to put mine together. I wanna give you options. If you use a cord, again, you can use a jump ring and put it through there. But all of you who get kits are going to get jump rings and a chain in a lobster clasp. So let's just finish this off. So I'm gonna take a jump ring and the Correct way to open a jump ring is to put your pliers on one side and put your thumb on the other side. I'm going to show you three different correct ways to open your, your jump ring. Pliers on one side, thumb on the other side. Here's my little opening. Boop, just push it down. Open jump ring. Put it on my little pendant. Pliers on one side, thumb on the other side, and push it back, close the other way. Easy. Take your pliers, make sure that everything's nice and flush. None of the sides are sticking out. Just check it with your fingers. I can feel a little bit of a gap there. So just work with it until I can do like this and it's perfectly together. There. Good. And now I'm going to put a jump ring on either end, on each end of this and the lobster class. So I'm gonna go ahead, slide that into my jump ring This is really long. It's, it's not, yours isn't going to be that long. I'm giving everybody 18 inches, which is my standard. I'm going to grab another, uh, another jump ring. And here's the second way that you can open a jump ring. Pliers on one side. Here's my little opening. Grab a second pair of pliers, put them on the other side and twist. And now I have a nice open jump ring. Slide that on the end of my chain. 
take my, my pliers, my square pliers, and squeeze the two ends together. And then I'm going to just adjust it and make sure that both of those little tips are backing right up against each other. You don't want any spaces in the middle. And I find it easier to do it this way than to squeeze it, because if you squeeze it too much, you'll collapse your loop. There you go. If I can't get my fingernail in there, I've done a good job. And the last way that you can open up your jump ring is to just take both of your fingers and twist it. I can never get that to work for me. It depends on the size of the jump ring. This jump ring is too small for me to be able to do that. So I'm not going to do that. But I want to show you also the incorrect way to open a jump ring. And I'm not going to do it with this one because I want to use it. So I'm going to find another jump ring. Here we go. Okay, here is how you do not want to open a jump ring. Where's the opening? There it is. I see well, there's a couple ways people do it incorrectly. I see people put their pliers on the inside of the jump ring and then open them up. Just open the pliers up. And yes, now you have a nice open jump ring, but I just mangled it. You, you don't want to do that because how are you going to get the circle back? You're going to be squeezing and pushing and, and trying and you're going to end up with with a big bend on the side. And don't do that, please. <laughs> because it never, never comes out to a nice circle again. It's always kind of mangled. And the other thing I see people doing is taking two pliers and pulling it apart. Again, you're gonna mangle your, you're gonna mangle the loop. Now how am I gonna get that back in place? I might get a reasonable facsimile of what I had, but it's not going to be a pretty circle like it was before. See, there's a big old, ooh, there. There's a big old dent at the bottom. It's not round the way it was before. Come on, focus, 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 focus. It's trying. It, it just can't seem to focus for some reason. Really close. Maybe that will help. There. See how it's all wavy now? It doesn't look as good as it did before. That's because I pulled it apart, ended up with a V down here on the bottom. Where's the bottom? Right here. Ended up with a V, and now it's not a circle anymore like this one is. And I just threw my other one on the floor. Oh, great. Anyway, I'll have to get another one. Those are the way, ways that you do not want to open your jump ring. Ta-da, a teaching moment. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and put the jump ring on the other side. I'm just gonna grab one of these. It's not the same size, but I don't feel like digging around for another one. Okay, so now I'm going to grab another jump ring for the other side that will house my lobster clasp. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna grab one pair of pliers, put them on one side. I'm just gonna use my thumb on this side and push that open. Grab the end of my, the other side of my chain, thread my chain into my jump ring and add my lobster clasp. Did we get out of focus again? My goodness. Okay. And my little lobster clasp. Come on. It doesn't know what to focus on. It's looking at all of this and going, where, where am I going? What do you want me to focus on? I don't know. Right here, right here, sweetie. There, 
Okay, so, <laughs> so there's my little lobster class into my jump ring along with the chain. Ah, this is so much fun. So much fun getting this to do what I want it to do. Uh, let's move it up. Maybe that'll help. Now I'm singing to the camera. Okay. So there we go. So blurry looking. Come on, give me a break. Okay. And now I just take my pliers and squeeze the ends together until my jump ring is closed. There we go. Lobster clasp attached. And now I have a necklace. There it is. Let's try it on a let's try it on a form. See what it looks like. Ooh, neato. If I must say so myself. Okay, I need to get it moved over there. There it is. Isn't that neat? Oh, I like it even more than I thought I would. That's really kind of awesome. What do you think, folks? Oh, I like it. I'm sorry, I'm staring at all the colors. I can't, I can't take my eyes off. It's so pretty. Anyway, so this is our piece for the day. I hope you like this. I really do. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put it on. Um, I really do like it. And it's just something different. I showed it to a friend of mine. I said, this is what I'm doing. I just had it laid out and it wasn't all put together or anything. It was just bare inside um, four squares. And she said, that looks pretty neat. I can't tell how you're putting it together, but that's certainly something that I've never seen you do before. So that is the story of today. We have our nice abstract art, art, abstract art um, framed pendant. <laughs> you can make a big one of these and hang it on your wall. Ah, I'm probably reaching. But anyway, that's it. Let me see if I can get this to where you can actually see me at the same time. I like this. I like it a lot. And I hope that you like it too. And those of you who get kits will, of course, get the chain and the jump rings and the lobster clasp and the 18 gauge wire and the beads that you can make it and design it any way you want. You don't have to do it exactly the way I did it. You saw my, my, first uh, rendering was completely different. It was just boom, 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 boom. And then I just switched it around a little bit. Um, pretty much, I, I was going to do just the little square beads all in the center and the round beads on the sides all the way through. And I just started playing around with the design. So I want you to do the same thing. You don't have to copy this. You use your, let your brain tell you what it wants you to do. Let your heart tell you what it wants to do, you to do. Use your artistic um, preference to make what you see as the perfect piece for you. Okay, that's enough of that. Again, again, I hope you will come back. 
If you have any comments, please feel free to leave them at, on my email, which is jewelrygen20 at gmail.com. That's J E W E L R Y G I N 20 at gmail.com. You can leave comments on the um, DeKalb County Library Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash DeKalb Library, spelled D E K A L B L I B R A R Y, or YouTube. Comments on YouTube, youtube.com slash DeKalb Library. Now, the difference is you can leave pictures on the Facebook page of the library, but not on um, YouTube. And you can send me pictures to the email, which I love, love, love to see. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you didn't like. Um, I want to hear it all so I can make improvements, uh, any ne necessary improvements. And please always know that these um, tutorials are sponsored by the library. They come completely free to you. The kits come completely free to those who get them. So until next time, enjoy what's left of your week, wherever you are in it. Enjoy your weekend, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.